Hello, this is day number 23 of our Couch to Handstand 30 day challenge. And this week we are going to try and kick up into a handstand. I'm Natalie, I teach the art of hand balancing. And again, as I said before, if you um, see this video here first, do go back to session number one. It really makes sense to follow the whole thing along because um, it's built up uh, progressively. Let's start with a warm-up for our handstand practice. Let's start again today by checking into our center line of balance. We've tried to transfer this feeling onto the hands. So now let's just remind ourselves again once what this feels like the right way up or the, the way up that we are used to. So dig your feet into the ground, really feel, have a um, feeling as if your legs and feet are growing roots into the ground, while at the same time being pulled up by your thread towards the ceiling. So if you want to close your eyes here to just check in with your body, arrive in your physical body now for a minute and reconnect the mind to your body. Now just focus on that center line of balance all the way, the weight falling through from the crown of your head to in between the feet, dropping through the surface of the floor, your whole body weight. Now gently rock to the front. Notice how your center line of balance is changing and how your feet are digging into the ground and come back, rock to the back of your feet and notice what this does to your feet, to your hips, to your core engagement. Come back to center, go to the right. Notice those gentle changes in the hips, in the engagement of your thighs, your quads, your glutes and come back to center and to the left. Can notice how the shift of the weight is happening mainly in the hips. Yeah, and come back to center now. Open your eyes if you haven't opened them already. And let's roll the shoulders back. Hello shoulders. This is our hello shoulders exercise. Okay, to the front. Make sure you're pulling in the front of the stomach towards the spine. Let's just stop for a moment, visualize this flat surface here in front of our stomach. Now everything comes a little bit closer to the spine. Automatically that kind of makes your glutes engage a little bit and, and makes you a little bit more um, compact, which is what we want in a handstand. Now just gently swing from side to side having a clear direction with your hand, hands and also imagine that your hips here are like headlights facing front while your upper body rotates left and right. We're giving the spine a gentle rotation here, warming up the spine and the upper back as well as the shoulder line. And just gently swing a couple of more times The swing here is a little bit more controlled than the one we did before. Okay, let's open and close, bending the knees in between. Really curve into your upper back as if somebody was pushing you here in front, in the center of your chest, pushing you so that you have to round and sort of avoid Make, make a really hollow body shape. Okay, let's curve and open diagonally up to the side. Curve, open, curve, open, curve, open, curve. Open four more times. And two, and three, and four. Okay, now step the feet apart slightly. Let's roll down today in a straddle position. Tuck the chin into your chest. 
roll down until you reach your maximum point of flexibility and then you bend the legs until your hands touch the ground. So the idea is to bend the legs enough so that your hands can touch the ground. From here we're going to bend even a bit more and lower the sit bones towards the ground. Then try and straighten as much as you can and don't worry if your legs don't straighten completely. Remember you don't have to copy me. You set your own standards and bend and straighten and bend and straighten and bend. Let's just stay here, prop the hands up here on your thighs to take the weight off your upper body. Gently rock from side to side here to open up the hips and your straddle. Okay, and, and then just bend the knees and roll up. Okay, arms out to the side. Let's repeat what we did in the first week. We're just, just pushing to the side, locking our elbows out, flexing the hands. Push for 10, one, two, three, straight out to the side, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Elevate the shoulders for one and pull them down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Arms by your side, circles. The arms are straight by your side here. Yeah, so not in front, not in back, just right by your side. Let's circle for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to the front, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Move them up and down 45 degrees and straight 45 degrees, straight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 180 degrees, full semicircle, one, and two, and three, shoulders pulling away from the ears, and six, and seven, eight, nine, and ten. Excellent. Shake it out. Meet me here in a four point position. So if you like, you can roll down vertebra by vertebra until we find ourselves in a downward facing dog with bent knees here. Pedal it out. And notice how your breathing gets a little bit faster, your breath is activated. And now really push into the floor as well. Push, so you elevate the shoulders, you push one hand, push the other, push the left, push the right. So you get a sense of really grounding yourself, digging into the ground. Okay, meet me here now in a four point position to warm up the wrists. So this time, let's just circle above the wrists, really pushing them into the, really pushing the hands into the floor, digging your fingers into the floor, one direction and the other direction, just that. Yeah, just um, challenge your maximum range a little bit, gently, mindfully, Okay, let's elevate the palms, fan the fingers out, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Let's take it to a plank position. Step both feet to the plank position, pull the navel in towards the spine, make sure you are pushing into the dome of your upper back, dig the fingers into the ground. Let's stay here for one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Lower it down. Let's take it to a side plank position now. Still supported with your knee and push up. Let's dip down for 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Other side. Prop yourself up here, one knee, hand by your hip, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Okay, great. Turn around. Fingers facing here diagonally to the back and open the chest. And hold it. And let's turn around. Walk the elbows to the front. See if you can walk them closer together, lower the shoulder line, bring your hand closer to the head, hold it here and breathe. And slowly release. Let's push up to our handstand prep, halfway handstand. Align your shoulders with the wrists. Let's hold it here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20. Lower the hips. Okay, let's do the jumping prep exercise that we did last time. And again, now we are taking, really make sure that you have your shoulders. Again, I repeat this a million times, aligned with the wrists. Check on the video or in front of a mirror if you're not entirely sure whether they are aligned. Let's lift up one foot, lift the left one high up. Let's do five jumps. One, two, three, four, five. Change legs. Left one comes down, the right one goes up. Align your shoulders again. You have to be above the wrists. You can't be here. This is not the exercise. You have to do this because we're going to do a handstand and jump for one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Come down, take a breather. Yes, yeah, so the most important thing when kicking up into a handstand is to get an understanding of what it feels like to actually properly take all your body weight above shoulders and wrists. That's a very crucial thing to understand that you are actually completely inverting yourself, completely flipping yourself upside down. And that feeling when the hips really reach that point where they are over the shoulders and the wrists can be quite scary. Um, when you reach that point, um, sometimes, first time people go there, it's a bit like, whoa, it's like ice skating. You feel like you don't really have any, any solid ground underneath you. So let's just get slowly used to that feeling of inverting the body and lift the hips. Now lift the left leg up, keep it straight. 
We're going to do a swing and a jump for five. And swing and jump. Swing and jump. And three. And four. And five. So it doesn't matter whether it goes high. It's just important that you use the swing and the jump together. Other leg lifts up high. Let's swing and jump. Swing and jump. And swing and jump. Swing and jump. Four. Five. Okay. Let's do this after we've taken a breather. Let's do this one more time. And this time we're going to try and jump less and just use the swing. So in an ideal world you use the jump and the swing to kick up. But um, we are trying to put now a little bit more emphasis on it. I just want you to feel the swing a little bit more. So let's isolate that swinging movement like kick the leg up, really drive it up. Um, you can think of driving it up behind you or up towards the ceiling, whichever uh, image works better for you. But let's just use the swing for five. So lift the legs up high, left foot up, and let's just swing so that the foot comes off the floor. Just swing and drive the leg. I'm four and five. So there is a bit of a jump, but it's not very much. Really focus on driving the leg. Oops, I'm touching the cactus here. Better not touch the cactus. Okay, let's swing the leg for one, two, three, four, five. Okay, great, and come down. So that was a little bit difficult, maybe you found that challenging and your foot didn't come off that much off the floor. But um, I just wanted you to get an awareness of how much drive there is in your leg, if you want it to be. Okay, now join me on the wall for a stretch and a supported handstand with our elevation. Let's just quickly open up the shoulders a bit more. This time we are not doing a resistance stretch, we are just Really doing a passive stretch, opening up the shoulder line, feet parallel, keep the navel pulled in towards the spine and lower the shoulder line as much as feels comfortable to give yourself a gentle challenge. Remain active, keep that active push into the wall here. Actively pushing into the wall while lowering, lowering the shoulder line and lowering the head through. And come back. Take your elevation, stool, chair, box, whatever you have. Uh, adjust it to the good, um, the, adjust it to the right distance, and let's now again take our very first halfway handstand. Now prop your feet up here on your stool and let's stay for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and come down. Remember your exit route. If you still find it hard to open the shoulders, it's useful if you take the chin to the chest or look out at your stool into the room rather than looking in between the hands because that's going to help you to open up your shoulder line more. Next time, let's take one foot up and prop your feet up. Lift the left leg up high. Let's stay here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. L lower the leg, step down carefully. All right, let's do this one more time. 
So here in these exercises now you can either change the leg that you're lifting up or keep the same one. That's your choice. I tend to always lift the same one because I, at the end of the day, always use the same leg to kick up into a handstand with. And if you want to alternate, that's a choice you can make. It is a little bit of a challenge, but of course challenges are what we're here for. So now, again, prop yourself up here on your elevation and lift the leg high up, as high as you can for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and step down okay make some space on the mat for and in fact put your elevation somewhere where it's not in the way let's just do one handstand hold both feet on the wall as we did in the past sessions just so we don't forget here prop one foot up make the other one join let's hold it here for one two three four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and come down. Great. Roll up, meet me here in standing. So, um, You'll see, you have probably felt now that this last exercise was already very familiar. Maybe it even seemed a little bit easy. That's because we've been doing it now for a week and a half and that's how you progress in handstands. In the beginning it seems impossible, step by step you do it and then at some point you are starting with an exercise that's more difficult and the one you did before that you thought was impossible now almost seems easy. It's like you've forgotten all about how hard the beginning was. Beginnings can sometimes be hard and that's why it's useful to take it step by step as we do it here. So now to cool down, just interlace the fingers again here, straighten your elbows, push your chest out to the front. Hold it here, take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Okay, press the hands into the floor, flex the fingers up, push the shoulders away from the ears. Hold it here. And release. One more time, push into the floor, flex the fingers. Hold it here and release. Take hold of your wrist, pulse the wrist towards you for 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Gently massage the base of your thumb and the base of the wrist. Okay, other side. Gently pulse the hand towards you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And press into the base of your thumb, base of your hand. Give it a gentle massage and a rub. And now let's rub the base of the wrist here together to create a bit of warmth and a bit faster, faster, and now let's rub the base of the palm together here, faster, and a bit faster, okay, and just slow that down, feel the heat that you've built up between your two palms, and separate the hands, and relax. That's the end of today's practice. 
Tomorrow we are actually going to kick up against the wall into a handstand. So I hope to see you again tomorrow. Let me know how today's session went for you, how your wrists are feeling after this practice. And until then, have a great day.